Suppose I declare that gremlins are controlling John's thoughts and actions. That these gremlins reside in John's brain. But that they are invisible and undetectable, so that performing exploratory surgery or employing CAT scans, PET scans, or magnetic resonance imaging, will not reveal these entities. Notice that I have shrewdly described these beings as invisible and undetectable. What this means is I have effectively taken away the means by which anyone can disprove my claim. If my detractors tell me that they have gone over John's brain with the most sophisticated instruments and have found no indication of gremlins, then I need only remind them that nothing in our diagnostic arsenal, present or future, can find these creatures. In protecting my idea thusly, I have made a non-falsifiable claim. An idea which cannot be falsified is one for which no evidence will prove it wrong. In the Gremlin case, even the lack of medical evidence cannot refute the claim because of the undetectability clause. Of course, being undetectable, everyone would rightly ask how in the world I know and am certain of the existence of these Gremlins. If I wish to protect my claim and toy around with people I could do so simply by proposing an ad hoc explanation on the fly. For instance, I could reply that I was contacted telepathically by the Gremlin Collective. That the presence of their comrades in John's head was revealed to me by this collective. That I am the only one person who received this communique. This claim of course cannot be tested. If true, then it was a one-time event. And no one will be able to confirm its veracity. Moreover, it is a claim which is not logically impossible, even if our current fund of knowledge about the human brain makes it highly suspect. Being not ruled out by logic, it succeeds in insulating the gremlin claim from being refuted. What is important to realize is that being immune to testing and falsification does not imply that the idea or claim is robust or true. What it does mean is the truth of the idea cannot be determined. And so that idea will remain a speculation, or at best a hypothesis. Take the Catholic doctrine of transubstantiation. We are told that after a priest chants a particular set of statements over pieces of unleavened bread, they magically turn into the muscle tissues and red blood cells of a human who died 20 centuries ago. We are also told that the wafers do not change in size, shape, weight, color, taste, feel, smell chemical composition and properties after the supposed transformation. So much so that if we placed unconsecrated and consecrated hosts in a jar and shake it until they well mixed, not even priests will be able to tell them apart and sort them. And yet the Catholic Church maintains that consecrated wafers are substantially different. And that they indeed have become human flesh. This perhaps is one of the most clear-cut examples of a non-falsifiable claim. Needless to say, the notion that baked flour turns into the same ancient corpse whenever humans with penises utter a standard sequence of words, is beyond bizarre. 